Before we get started on this video, the NOx sensor that you're going to watch me put in is one I bought previously from Amazon. It was like a hundred and sixty some dollars. Well, I got it put in and it didn't work. It uh, took one code away and gave me two more additional codes. One for a NOx sensor heater and then the other one was uh, something else related to it. I don't remember what it was. But anyway, long story short, I had to take that one out and buy a different one. So I found this one on Amazon. It was a genuine Cummins knock sensor and the part number for it was 529-5473RX. And this one was about 390 bucks, somewhere in there. So uh, if you get one from Cummins, I think they're close to a thousand for this sensor. But anyway, Got this one put in there and uh, solved all my problems. So just be aware if you're buying some of the cheaper ones um, from Amazon that aren't genuine, they may or may not work. I did read in some of the comments, some guys had kind of the similar problems as uh, what I did, but I figured I'd go with it and see if it would work or not because it seemed like more people said they had good luck with them, but obviously, I did not, so I ended up and got this one set. But anyway, we're gonna get into the video and I'm gonna show you guys how to swap this out. <laughs> So to get this oxygen sensor out, the first thing you need to do is jack up your truck, take your tire off, take your inner fender well liner out, which is all these bolts along here. And then there'll be a couple up here under the battery. There's two there and then a couple push tabs. Well, there's one there and then there's one back here so another thing you'll do is you'll remove your air piping which is a band clamp down on the turbo you'll remove this clamp that goes to the crankcase vent line and then you can remove this top clamp which goes to your air box remove these two clips and then you can pull that out and then it has you know three screws for your air filter So then when you get that out of here, that'll look something like this. And then that tube on that air piping disconnects from right here. So when you get that out of the way, you'll have some access up top, which I mainly just use for my light. But I find it easiest to do all the work right here. I got to everything just fine. Tools I use was a 10 mil, this pick, channel lock, some WD-40, these pliers, I didn't really use that. I used a 13 16 wrench, this little Craftsman quarter inch, and this little Milwaukee eight millimeter nut driver, and then this little eight millimeter wrench, some uh, side dikes, cut the zip ties, WD-40, PB blaster, and this little flathead screwdriver, and of course a jack, and that's about it. Once you get the tire and wheel well off, you'll have better access. And I've already removed mine, but I figured this would be a little easier um, to see it with it being removed, sealed. First thing you'll want to do is remove this heat shield. And it'll be sitting here like that. It's just two little bolts. These are what they look like. And then you'll have your oxygen sensor, which will be this end. And it'll be sitting in here just like that and then it'll be looped around up in here zip tied and follows down it'll be zip tied onto this coolant line up here 
and then it'll be clipped on right here and you just undo this 10 millimeter bolt and then this just clips out and then it'll be zip tied um, to those wires back down in there and then they'll go in this little clip here which just pokes through you just bend it up and then pull it through pretty easy and then undo the wires there so this just take some pv blaster and spray in there and let it sit and then this will just unscrew out of this hole in the exhaust and you'll pull it out just like that so this is the easiest way i found to get these bank one oxygen sensor off is this right here mounts like that so you take this top mounting screw out you're going to cut the zip tie that's right there and then you can rotate this down and then you can get a ridge on this nut right here so what I use is this little 8 mil wrench and then this little guy right here it's got a magnet on it so you don't drop your screw when it comes out the craftsman quarter inch with the 8 millimeter Milwaukee nut driver works really well I'll leave a link to the description below to pick up one of these craftsman rat little ratchets but essentially now what I'm gonna do is that little nut right there behind that conduit I'm gonna put this on there and then I can hold it with both hands and get it right off so I'm holding the uh, wrench with my left hand I'm using my right hand to work this ratchet until I've almost got it all the way off and now so I don't drop this nut it's almost set it all the way out So now I'm going to get it off by hand, hopefully. Should be able to just hold this. Nope, okay. still wants to spin. So now that we can see what we're looking at out of the truck, this is how it mounts inside there. It mounts straight up and down just like this. So you're going to be getting a screw out of that hole up top and out of the bottom. So this is the plug that plugs into that. It goes 
in just like this. This is how it'll be looking. I have that little notch out at the bottom. And this yellow piece is the locker and it slides in and out. So when it's all the way in, it's locked. So what you have to do is you have to take a 90 degree pick and stick up under that notch out and kind of just start pulling and working and it helps to spray some WD-40 around it when it's up there. But once you get it pried loose, you can just kind of work it out just like so. And then once it's pulled all the way out, which that's all the way out, it just simply pushes right off from the connector. So I also found it easier, that little black tab looking thing right there. It's hard to see up in here, but this piece right here mounts on this bolt stud right there. So I just took these pliers and got in there and worked it loose. All right, so here's the new one. I'll put a zip tie on here to hold this heat shielding down like the old one had on it. This is the old one. You can tell it's kind of a, probably a, not as good as quality one but the ram one they wanted fifteen hundred dollars for this thing and that's just crazy i bought this one off amazon it's like 170 bucks so i figured i'd give this a try see how long it lasts hopefully it works we're gonna put this in there and get it all hooked up that's the first thing take this cap off and we'll put this sensor up here we'll screw it down in here so the easiest way to get this on as you stick the bolt through and put the first grommet on and then get the get the center thing positioned down in here and push it on and then rotate it down flat like this and then somebody from this side underneath the truck where I'm at can hold this bolt through and then somebody go down through the top from the top side by the air filter and they can get this nut on while you're holding the bolt. This is what worked best for me. So now that I got that one in, I'm gonna rotate this up and I'm gonna put the top one in. All right, now we got that one in, I'm gonna tighten it up. You have to move your wrench to the other, to the other side. I won't be able to use that on that one. I have to go back to my... You want me to put it on there? Mm -hmm.
Okay. All right, there's that. Now, we're gonna put the plug back in. So once you get your plug pushed in and clipped in place, now we're gonna start routing this wire up back around in here. All right, so now you take your 7 8 wrench, tighten this down, I put a zip tie on here, I put one back here, reclip this, reclip this, and then you put a zip tie on right back there. And now all this should be pretty well buttoned up. So now we're gonna put on our uh, air intake boot and then uh, put the fender wheel back in. So you put your air piping back on, tighten it up, put this crankcase vent line back on, make sure you put this hose clamp back up there then we'll go back up top put your air box cover back on tighten this up plug your two sensors in and then we'll put the wheel well in and then put the tire on mm -hmm. 